Hello, good uh, good day, and welcome to uh, the our lecture two. Okay, for this uh, uh, program. So, just a little uh, bit of background about myself. Once again, this is Dr. Artelo Palma. I'm a PhD in Development Research and uh, Administration. I'm the academic head and uh, also the research director of my institution, academic institution. I'm the author, publisher, recognized by the National Book Development Board of the Philippines. I'm a research consultant, um, international peer reviewer at Springer. Researchers, my researchers will be found on, you can, you can search my researchers on uh, Google Scholar. I'm a licensed professional teacher and also a proprietor of Artelo, a sole proprietor of Artelo Palma Book Publishing. So here are my two books here. The Academic Research, The Easier Way. Uh, it's already published and out uh, there. And uh, the uh, other one and it's still to be published, okay, the uh, Statistics, The Easier Way. Okay, it's still to be published by God's Grace. Okay, so now uh, this program, uh, is actually uh, cre accredited by the uh, PRC, okay? Uh, you can uh, join my webinar to earn PIPN CPD units. And if you are interested, you can contact me or you can email me at contact at apalma.info. So the, the, the program is doing academic research the easier way. So for today, our topic is instances of action research that require quantitative research philosophy and principles. So if you want to uh, go back or if you want to review, okay, about my first uh, lecture, which is quantitative research. So just uh, feel free to um, um, search it on my uh, YouTube channel, okay? It's uh, topic one, okay, for this program. So the learning outcome for this uh, topic, okay? Uh, learners will integrate action research as a research paradigm in their quantitative research or study for continuing growth in education. So uh, let's begin with understanding the background of action research. So the work of Kurt Lewin in 1946, who researched extensively on social issues, is often described as a major landmark in the development of action research as a methodology. And Lewin's work was followed by that of Stephen Corey and others in the USA who applied this methodology for researching into uh, educational issues. And in Britain, according to Hopkins in 2000, 2002, the origins of action research can be traced back to the school's council's humanities curriculum project with its emphasis on an experimental curriculum and the uh, reconceptualization of curriculum uh, development. So the most well-known proponent of uh, action research in the UK has been Lawrence uh, Steenhouse, whose uh, seminal uh, work, An Introduction to Curriculum Research and Development, added to the appeal of action research for studying the theory and practice of teaching and the uh, curriculum. So action research actually is a research paradigm. As a research paradigm, it is the set of common beliefs and agreements shared between experts about how problems should be understood and addressed. Uh, Kuhn, uh, 1970. So it is a process of involving uh, fact-finding, according to Kurt uh, Lewin in 1947. Uh, research is really a process of involving uh, fact-finding, taking action, and fact-finding about the results of the uh, action or the action taken. Okay. So action research is a process by which uh, practitioners attempt to study their problems scientifically in order to guide, correct, and evaluate their decisions and actions. So here are some of the definitions, other definitions of action research. So Stephen and Corey, action research is the research undertaken by practitioners so that they may be, uh, or they may improve their practice. And according to BEST, uh, action research is focused on the immediate application, not on the development of theory. It has placed its emphasis on the real problem here and now it is in a local uh, setting. According to Molly, on the spot research aim at the solution of an immediate problem is generally known in education as action research. So action research is concerned itself with the uh, immediate problem faced by the teachers and administrators. It helps them make judgment and engage in better practices on uh, their respective jobs. Therefore, it is no exaggeration to say that action research is the research by the practitioner of the practitioner and for the practitioner. Because uh, once you're a practitioner, you're doing it for your, your client, okay? You're, you're, and then in the case of educators, okay, your uh, client, their client are the uh, students. So in, in other words, you're indirectly doing it for the students. 
or for your uh, career or your expertise. Okay, so develop a definition of action research. Um, another definition, sorry. So action research is a process in which participants inspect their own educational practices system systematically and carefully by using the techniques of research that according to Ferrans in 2000. So Kemi says that action research is the study of practice or one's own practice, uh, educational research issues page uh, 182. And these are techniques of uh, research, so identifying the underlying educational issue. Uh, that's, of course, uh, something that is beneath the surface and providing immediate remedy or intervention. Okay. And observation if the solution is working or not. And the needs for emerging technologies, usability, efficiency, and uh, sustain, uh, suitability. Okay. So uh, according to uh, this is the model, okay, of course, Cuban's action research. So the unfreezing, changing, and the refreezing. So here, the then freezing that includes the planning, the changing, that's the action, and refreezing that's the results. So uh, from time to time, you will be having the feedback and so on and so forth. And then it's going to be a loop, okay, of unfreezing to refreezing and down to unfreezing again. So for plan under planning, it's preliminary analysis, gathering of data, feedback on the results, drawing up uh, of the action plan executing action plan for action and learning process, follow-up actions and for results, changes in behavior, okay, data gathering, measurement of results. So we will be able to know if there's a change in behavior and so on. So we'll have the feedback. If there's no change, then let's proceed to action, go back again to another result, okay, or so on and so forth. So if uh, you just have to, you know, uh, go back to the process all over again. So action research principles. Action research is a cyclic inquiry process. That's what I told you. So you just have to go back from one so on to looking at your feedback and then and so on and diagnose it again and again. If there's a problem, situation, planning and doing action steps again, implementing and evaluating outcome. So evaluation lead to uh, diagnosing the situation and new based on learning from previous uh, activity cycle. So researchers and practitioners carried out in the collaboration with and rethinking relationship between science, knowledge, learning and action. So uh, action research actually uses scientific approach to study uh, social and organizational problems together with the people who experience them. So in other words, action research is not just for, you know, uh, educators themselves, but of course, it can also be applied in other fields of expertise, because the, the principles and concepts are just the same. And uh, the effect of doing so will just be, uh, of course, uh, just the same. Okay, primarily, it's just uh, different when it comes to uh, where it is being applied in what field it is being applied. So principles, another principles, it is focused on the improvement of the problematic situation in practice. The design of the study is emergent with four phases like planning, acting, observing, and reflecting. So the recursiveness process and so on. So if you're going to come uh, emergent because uh, you have to, you know, uh, along the way, you may change your plan or do something uh, much better, okay, just to improve your the, the, the collection of information and so on. So that's why you, you go back to planning and acting and observing and reflecting all over again. So researchers engage participants as co-investigators. So the lead researcher may be uh, either an insider, an outsider, or in a configuration the two that may emerge over time. So multiple forms of data are collected and analyzed in a systematic way as the research process unfolds. So the philosophy of action research. So teacher as a researcher here and educational for educational reform and action research encourages teachers to be collaborators or collaborators in revising curriculum, improving their work environment, professionalizing teaching, developing policy, and can be used as an evaluative tool which can assist in self-evaluation whether the self be an individual or an institution. So teacher research has its roots in action research. So the purpose of action research, of course, is action research is a method used for improving practice. It involves action, evaluation, and critical reflection, and based on the evidence gathered, changes in practice are then implemented. Action research is participative and collaborative. It is undertaken by individuals with a common purpose. It is a situation-based and context-specific. It develops reflection based on interpretation made by the participants. Knowledge is created through action and at that point of application. So action research can involve problem solving if the solution, if the solution to the problem leads to the improvement of practice. And action research findings will emerge as action develops, but these are not conclusive 
or absolute. That's the purpose of action research. So this is the method methodology. You diagnose first the problem, you identify or define the problem, and do your action planning, considering alternative courses of action. And after that, you take now your action, select a course of action to take to be uh, to, to use. And once done, okay, you have to evaluate studying the consequences of that action. And finally, you identify your general findings. And from your general findings, you diagnose if there's a problem all over again, and then you do the same thing. Uh, the whole process again. So I'll give you some sample cases here just to guide you how action research is uh, actually being done. So it's just simple as way. It's just as simple as this. You just have to ask the problem. Okay, uh, let's uh, relate it to the present uh, or the, the status quo, the situation in the in the Philippines right now. I mean, it's a pandemic. So students then turn their their videos on during online class. Okay. So as a teacher, what will be your courses of actions? Did your actions work? What are your proofs? So students didn't turn their videos on during online class. So perhaps a teacher might, uh, you know, uh, give points, okay, to a certain students if he or she turns uh, on the uh, videos during online class. So that could be an action. And after that, okay, you observe, okay, is everybody turning their camera on? And if not, okay, if it's not all, and if there are some few, or if there are still many who don't turn their camera or their videos on during online class. So there must be a problem with your action. So you have to take another action or you have to take uh, you know, uh, other actions aside from what you've just started or what you just have uh, implemented. So another problem, okay, junior high school or even senior high school are not motivated to attend to their online classes. As a teacher, what will be your courses of actions? Did your actions work? What are your proofs? So it's just the same, uh, you know, question you're going to take and then uh, study okay I mean uh, you have to think of actions okay to you know to address the problem and if uh, the problem was addressed okay then we can say that uh, at least okay your action works another problem students don't read their modules in distance mode of learning as a teacher, what will be your courses of action? So this is a common problem nowadays, okay? especially in the uh, modality, learning modality of the, the in the Philippines, okay? in the Philippine education during the uh, pandemic. So as a teacher, what will be your courses of actions? Did your actions work? What are your proofs? Okay, so just some of the uh, cases. Another problem, you notice that your teacher, so if you're a principal, your principal or a school administrator, you notice your teachers aren't motivated enough to perform their duties and functions. So as an administrator, what will be your courses of action or what will be your course of actions? Did your actions work? What are your proofs? Okay. So note that, uh, you know, research findings, action research are not conclusive, as I've said earlier. You can tap quantitative research to generalize your findings for this matter. So because action research is situation-based and context-specific, it cannot be generalized. Here we are the role of quantitative research gets into the picture. Okay, so let's proceed. So now you begin the process. If you uh, if you watch my le lecture, uh, the first lecture, lecture one, yeah, I, I told you that the uh, you know the, the the specific ingredient or the, the, the ingredient is just to observe, think, and read. Okay, so after identifying your findings, you might want to incorporate if they challenge existing theory and address research gap. This is the combination or the combined observe, think, and read part in quantitative research uh, in my uh, first lecture. So your study continues, but this time your aim is to make it generalizable. So you begin to anchor it on a theory to verify it and the theory itself and understand relationships between variables thereafter. Okay, so what do I mean by this? So let's have an illustration. So suppose you have a problem here. In action research, you have a problem. So junior high school students don't turn their camera on during their online class with me. Okay, so your remark, this is a fact. No, this is based on your observation. This is part of the fact finding according to Kurt Lewin. So action taken, you give extra points to those who turn their videos on during your class. So this is just one of the possible actions you may want to explore during the entire duration of your action research. Of course, this is what we call the uh, taking of action or taking action according to Kurt Lewin. And now, uh, after taking your action, you have now your results of the action taken. So suppose only a few now are not turning their videos on during their online class with you. So this is a fact associated with the results of your actions. In fact, this is what we call fact finding about the results of the action according to Kurt Lewis. So this is the uh, integrated three process, the, the common, the general three process of uh, doing action research. So 
Now, notice there are so many questions you have in mind that are associated with the results of your actions. Okay, that's part of the observation part. Okay, of the observation, uh, you know, uh, point. So why there are some students who don't turn their videos on during their online class despite they will have rewards? Suppose, okay, uh, you gave points and then, but then not everyone, or in fact, many are still not turning their cameras on or their uh, videos on. So why there are still students who don't turn their videos on during online class despite they will have reward points when they do so? And why there are those who responded to your action right away? That's part of the think process. Now it's time for you to read previous studies and theories to identify research. You have to answer that question, of course. And uh, your hope is to come up with possible theory or to come up with, you know, uh, uh, I mean, a, a theory that could answer your question. So that's part of the read process or part in doing quantitative research. So notice that your direction is going detailed to the principle, philosophy, and methodology of quantitative research. So you begin, okay, associating or relating your findings to relevant theories in learning and education. So you now have in your mind an argument as part of your proposition later. So if rewards work to change behavior, then why it doesn't apply to all as noticed in the behavior of your students after your action? So suppose... The answer to your question is found in this theory, incentive theory, which states that our behavior is dictated by a desire for external rewards. So now, if that theory is true, our behavior is dictated by desire for external rewards, uh, according to incentive theory. So therefore, you 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 argue this is part of your proposition, okay? Uh, um, combining the constructs and the uh, propositions, okay, and then. And I mean, combining the constructs and then uh, um, integrating or, or, or showing the relationship as a proposition. And of course, uh, it's, it's a form part of your argument uh, about the theory. So students desire, based on the theory, if that theory is true, then based on that, students desire to get a good grade is associated with their response in an online class modality of learning when rewards are given. So the reason to investigate more of your proposition as evident in the literature, that's part of your, you know, the rationalism principle uh, finding for, I mean, so, sorry, uh, that the theory proposition is part of the rationalization principle, but uh, finding for the research gap variables hypothesis and creation of these things here, that's part of the empiricism, you know, philosophy. So. Research gap, this is a new study because the scenario is online class modality, a new mode of learning in the Philippines. So there's a good point. There's a good argument that you have to pursue your, you know, your uh, argument uh, against the theory. Okay, that's your belief about the theory. So that's your proposition. So um, these are measurable components linked to your proposition theory and research gap, the variables. You come up now with the variables. Okay, so these variables are, you know, the constructs you, you found in the theory or in your proposition. So here we have student level of perceived desire to get a good grade. This is just an example. Of course, you can uh, do better than this. Okay, mas may maganda pa nito. So students level of perceived response to their online class with reward. Uh, lalong gumaganda yung variable mo if uh, you, you read many things. No? You read things. You read a lot. So hypothesis, this is a version of your proposition but with integrated variables to so help you verify the general claim of the theory. So higher perceived desire to get a good grade will result to higher perceived response to an online class with reward. So with that hypothesis, okay, based on the hypothesis, you can now come up with your statement of the problem, which are the questions that are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound based on the hypothesis. So first question should be in line with your first variable. What is the student's level of perceived desire to get a good grade? You may add indicators here based on your literature. So you can actually improve. You can do some enhancement or improvement of this. This is just a suggestion and at the same time, a, an illustration and just a basic example in order for you to understand the concept or uh, even the, the way how it is uh, has to be done. So what is the student's level of perceived response to their online class with reward? You may add indicators here based on your literature. And so you can, uh, you know, you can integrate now these two variables here and uh, uh, ask for their, you know, relationship. So is there a significant effect of level of perceived desire to get a good grade to level of perceived response to an online class with reward? So there's some sort of a modeling, you know, analysis here, or a, a modeling tool here or a statistical modeling here in the future. So that's it. Okay. 
So what's uh, the good title for this? Okay, you, you, you just have to, you know, perhaps you can combine the, the two variables here, perceived desire to get a good rate and the perceived response to an online class with reward. I think that could be a good, uh, you know, some, a good suggestion for a title for this study. So the title should be the last one because uh, a quantitative research begins from general to down to specific, from uh, theory to hypothesis testing. So please review my lecture one in order to understand more about this. Okay, so let's review. Action research is a preliminary activity to more meaningful understanding of things in the area of teaching and other expertise. And action research is a research paradigm that can become more meaningful and conclusive and generalizable if proceeded with quantitative research. Okay, so once again, okay, allow me to, you know, um, <laughs> allow me to, uh, show it to you some uh, my additional contact details if you want to contact me. So email me at uh, contact at apalma.info or contact at apbpublishing.com. My, my, mobile, my mobile phone number is 0936903 or 0919 So you may also visit my website at uh, https www.apbpublishing.com or https www.apalma.info. My YouTube channel is our fellow Palma PhD Life Ideas Books, and my Shopee store is at Fun with Learning Bookshop. So you may be, visit my uh, store or bookshop. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, if you want, okay, once again, okay, if you want to, uh, if you want to earn, okay, yes, uh, CPD, uh, 15 CPD units, okay, join my webinar. Okay, if you want to earn uh, 15 CPD units, contact me at apalma.info or send me a message at contact at apalma.info. Email me at contact at apalma.info. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I hope you learned many things today. Thank you for this, uh, for, for listening to my lecture. And please uh, um, follow my, my YouTube uh, channel, okay, for more videos like this in the future. Thank you and uh, please stay safe, healthy and blessed everyone. Okay, God bless us all.